Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. It's Seth. Today, I'm with Arna from Waverly DX. They are solving for the problem of ear infections at home. Because when you have small kids, which I know Arna does, and I had at one point, my kid was young, and he's nine now. And it's a way of life. You're going to get ear infections, some more than others. And nothing's worse than bringing a cranky kid to a doctor's office. Actually, getting them even into the car seat is hard enough. So, hi, Arna. How's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. So, you, this is not your first rodeo. You've been doing a bunch of different things. You were, when we last talked, you said you started out on your own, then you went in house, then you went back out on your own, and now you are back in house, but now you're running the show. Absolutely. I feel like everything I've done in my career has really led me to what I'm doing today. I started off at IDEO 20 plus years ago, a little embarrassed to say how many years ago, but basically it was a consulting firm that helps companies solve really big innovation challenges. And I was focused specifically in the healthcare practice. So worked with a huge breadth of companies on basically how they might use technology to facilitate healthcare delivery back in the very early days before digital health was even a thing. I then went, Mm -hmm. as you said, in-house, helped a company grow to over a billion and a half as vice president of user experience and design there. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. (laughs) It was a high valuation. Yeah. And then when I went back out on my own and consulted again with a large breadth of companies of early stage healthcare companies. And all of those experiences led me to Waverly, where I'm now leading yeah. the company and we're looking to solve a really big meaty challenge for parents, which is basically getting care for your kid at two in the morning when they're cranky and you don't want to go to urgent care and you don't want to expose them. And you're to, cranky probably at that point too. Yeah. <laughs> you're bleary eyed and don't really want to be driving. But that's often when mm-hmm. kids really start crying and need and need care and support and being able to have a solution that addresses your ear infection right there, right now, awesome. within 10 minutes, I think is, is a huge opportunity to support parents and in, in making parenting easier. It's wild because we were talking right before we hit record that like, why hasn't this been done before? And you said something very astute that it, we didn't have the technology, like we didn't have the phones to do, that could be used. It's amazing what we're able to do now. I think we forget life before phones, but it's actually the phones haven't, we phones haven't been around for that long. If you think about the mm. lifespan of not only humanity, but just an average adult right now, we're so dependent yeah. on them. And they have gotten more and more sophisticated over the years. And it really is recently that the sensors on phones, the speaker, the microphone, the camera, you know, iPhones 12 and newer have LIDAR scanning, have become so sensitive that 
uh, you can run a whole host of medical diagnostics using these sensors. You weren't able to do that before because the phones weren't sensitive enough, weren't sophisticated enough. And so we've really had to wait until we've gotten to a point that the technology has matured to be able to develop these medical diagnostics on phone-based platforms. We're just using the phone's hardware completely. So all of our tones are completely generated by the phone. Our entire premise at Waverly is to use the smart form only, software only, to deliver medical diagnostics. So it's like your kid has an earache at two o'clock in the morning, you download Waverly DX and you're there. You can test it. Pretty or much. Or is there more to it? Pretty much, yeah. You can basically test and see if there's fluid in the ear. And then we have a button you can press on our app. And within 30 minutes, you've got a pediatric specialist on the line to conduct the rest of the assessment that you would need done for an ear infection. And you get your diagnosis and that pediatric specialist can also call in a prescription at whatever pharmacy is closest to your house. Oh, wow. This is beyond Murphy's Law. I'm just thinking back. I'm I'm 40 right now. And I'm I'm thinking back. And I'm at the age where I remember the Commodore 64 that didn't even have a hard drive. And I remember that my first computer that had a hard drive, it was like 16 megabytes, not even a gigabyte. To think back then... And what we could do with literally something that fits in your pocket, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling, oh and it has huge applications for increasing equity and inclusion in terms mm-hmm. of healthcare and access to healthcare as well, because you can get this in, I mean, everybody in the world has a smartphone at this point, mm-hmm. different models, right? Both iOS, both Android, but this should work across pretty much any phone that's out there, as long as the quality of the speaker and the microphone are where they need to be. And so the idea is really to start getting medical diagnostics wherever they need to be, whenever you need them, as opposed to being at the mercy of having to go into a clinic on a doctor's schedule that may actually be very far away and very inconvenient to travel to. Or or at least a few hours because you have to wait till they come in and your kid's cranky. That's true. You want the kid helped sooner rather than (laughs) any parent is like, all right, this kid needs to go to bed. Don't blame them for not wanting to go to bed, but I need sleep too. This is not working out for me. So overall, you've gone from your own thing, then in-house to your own thing again, to, and then you were tapped for this. But you, it seems like you were always in the healthcare sphere or technology healthcare sphere. Is that correct? You know, I got the bug for healthcare very, very early on when I was at IDEO, which supports companies across lots of different industries, a lot of people didn't really like working on the healthcare projects because there were a lot of constraints. There was a lot that you couldn't do. And I felt that all of those constraints pushed me to be much more creative because Mm -hmm. you needed to find the right solutions within higher constraints. And I actually really liked that. And I liked the complexity of the systems where the end user is not the same as the customer, is not the same as the person benefiting. And so... There's a lot of added complexity when you're working in healthcare and there's a lot of constraints, but I somehow really enjoyed it and stuck with it. So started early on Mm -hmm. and and I'm still here in healthcare today. It's nice to find your niche, find something that you're really enjoying and go for it. So you've done both. You've done the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur side of things. What do you like better? You know, I think it's an interesting question. I think... Fundamentally, what I love is creating something that's new, creating mm-hmm. something from from scratch and building something that doesn't exist yet. And I don't think it matters if exactly the context that you're doing that in, as long as you're mm-hmm. creating something that's new. And, you know, I think some people are, are more suited to the entrepreneurship and route and creating things that are new that don't yet exist. And there are other people that are better suited at improving what's already there. And they're both incredibly valuable and important. And you mm-hmm. just have to know which one you are. And I am the former. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. It seems like you've excelled at both. 
because now you're building something from scratch. I think it's nice you can see that you've done both and you've had the experience of both. Whereas, like, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, at least the young ones coming out, they come out of college and they just start out on their entrepreneurial journey. They can't appreciate both. And I think that's kind of nice that you're able to say the pros and cons of both. I think it's valuable to have switched between breadth and depth. When you're consulting, mm -hmm. you get a lot of breadth. You very quickly see a lot of different kinds of challenges. When you're in-house, you get a lot of depth and you have to take something over the finish line. And I think mm -hmm. each of them help the other. So I feel really grateful that I've been able to bounce between breadth and depth in my career and the different steps that I've taken. What is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? I think open eyes and ears is the most important thing to carry with you all the time. I think awareness. As the CEO of a company, you have to stay aware on so many different levels. You have to be aware of what's happening around your company, of other players that are tangential, are similar, of competitors, of companies mm -hmm. that can be partners. You have to stay aware of what's happening inside the company, how your finances look, what people are working on, how things are tracking towards your goals. And it's all about connecting those dots. And as the CEO, you're not really able to connect dots unless you stay truly aware of everything that's happening both around your company and, and within your company. Well, that's, that, that's a great answer. Also, I'm sure your phone, too. You can't walk, leave without your phone. <laughs> I, 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 You're I, right. I was, I, was, I was wondering where you were going to go with that because your whole business is around the phone and the sensors, but then you went into very deep, and I love that. So. Yeah, Seth, I think the phone is just a given, though, right? Like, nobody yeah, leaves their of, house without of. their phone, their wallet, and their keys. <laughs> when is Waverly DX coming out, or is what's the goal for it to come out? Because I know a lot of parents are probably listening to this saying, oh, my God, I need this. We will be out in the spring, so we'll have uh, you'll be able to get on the platform, start using us, and be super ready for ear infection season that starts in the fall. Oh yeah, for and that, if, there's a season for it. There is some seasonality. So statistically, twenty five percent of kids have recurring ear infection, and they have no seasonality oh. to those recurring ear infections. Those happen all year, but the oh, kids God. that have fewer ear infections do tend to have them during cold and flu season, which is roughly September to March. So spring, you're going to get get right in right before everything hits. So you're ready for the yep. uptick. Exactly. So we want to we want to get people comfortable and using the platform before the surge in the fall. And the goal is Android and iOS, I assume, right? Our goal by the end, of, we're starting with iOS because the majority just one phone. <laughs> the majority of people who uh, have expressed interest, we have an early access sign up on our website. Okay have been on iOS. We've been asking what phones people have, but our yeah. goal is to also be on Android by the end of the year. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you or connect with Waverly? So we are on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, Waverly DX, or just visit our website, wavelydx.com. And we look forward to hearing from all of you out there who are parents of young kids and mm -hmm. who could use some help and support in making access to healthcare easier. Especially at two o'clock in the morning. Especially at two o'clock in the morning. Thank you for telling us your story. It's always fascinating to hear entrepreneurs' stories and where they've come from, their experience, and all that. So this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's been a great discussion. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them, and these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network.
You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christopher Hines hosts a great podcast called Founder Success Methods. Chris, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. You'll learn how to really grow your startup and get the basic strategies to build a successful company. We show you all the details and all the strategies that you just can't find on Google, YouTube, or even other podcasts. Ooh, we're going to be lined up for this one. Where can people subscribe? You can search for the podcast, Founder Success Methods, wherever you listen to podcasts, or find me on Twitter at Chris Podcasting. Or go to marketingpodcasts.net. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.